Hello friends, welcome to Piping Engineers. In today's video, we will discuss about net positive suction head. What is net positive suction head available? What is net positive suction head required? What is cavitation? What is the relation between net positive suction head available and net positive suction head required? What is the impact of net positive suction head on our pumping system? So for more updates and more videos, please like, follow and subscribe our channel. So let's begin our today's video and see what is net positive suction head. So net positive, what is net positive suction head? Net positive suction head is the pressure required at the pump inlet to avoid cavitation. So this, this is the pressure which is required at my pump inlet port so that cavitation can be avoided in my pump. NPSH is always positive since it is expressed in terms of absolute fluid column height in meter head or feet head. NPSH, there are two types of NPSH that we will be discussing in our further slides. One is NPSH available and another is NPSH required. So the, the thing is that my NPSH should always be a positive value and this positive value is used to avoid cavitation in my pump. So let's see, let's see what cavitation is. In our uh, school days, we all have learned that when the pressure of water falls below its vapor pressure, the water starts boiling even at low temperature. So this phenomena, when it when it starts happening in a, in my pumping system, the problem of cavitation starts occurring. So because what happens is when my water even at low pressure starts boiling, bubbles are formed in water. So you would have seen water boiling, bubbles are formed on the surface of the water, and when these bubbles, when this when this uh, water uh, enters into high pressure zone, these bubbles get exploded. And when they are exploded, they erode the surface of the system. Mainly what happens is these bubbles are exploded on impeller of my pump and, and what happens my, impe my imp material of impeller gets eroded rapidly time and time. So uh, when, this, when this cavitation pro pro problem occurs again and again, again and again, my pump system uh, starts facing some problem that we will be discussing in our next slides. So this problem, uh, this phenomena is known as cavitation. So let's see what is NPSH available and NPSH required. Friends, uh, while referring to a pumping system, while dealing with a pump vendor, you would be uh, coming across these two terms. Your pump vendor would ask you, sir, what is your NPSH available? And he will be simply giving you NPSH R. So when, this is a very general question in interview also that interviewers ask. What is uh, which which NPSH is given by the pump supplier and which NPSH is given by you? So pump supplier always gives us NPSH R, the net positive suction head, requ head required, and what we will be providing him, we will be providing that we are having this much of net positive suction head at our pump at our pumping system. So that is available. So NPSH is generally calculated and provided by the system owner or process engineer. Same thing which I told you earlier. This is the design criteria. This is the design criteria, design selection that is done by you, and you will be providing this value to your pump manufacturer. It is dependent on the type selected, type of tank selected uh, that that comes in uh, our NPSH calculation. The temp, the type of tank selected, suction static suction head, vapor pressure of the liquid. Vapor pressure is one of the important factors that uh, tells that uh, describes my NPSH available that have a lot of impact on my NPSH available calculation. Pump suction connections with my reservoir on tank. So all these factors are generally considered while calculating NPSH available. And this is given by the designer. So this is given by the, sub, uh, this is given by the end, end product user or process design engineer. Similarly, what is NPSH R? NPSH R is given, is provided by the pump manufacturer. And what is it? It is the minimum suction head minimum suction head uh, mark my words minimum suction head because this this is the minimum pressure which will be required by any pump manufacturer at its suction port to avoid cavitation and this is given by the pump supplier or the pump manufacturer so your npsh available should always be greater than this npsh r in any case to provide uh, to to reduce to uh, reduce the cavitation or to means uh, eradicate the problem of cavitation in your pumping system. The NPSH R is generally calculated by pump manufacturer by testing equipment in his factory. So these values they are generally fixed for a uh, family of a pump and these are given by your pump manufacturer. So let's see the uh, relation between NPSH available and NPSH R. 
NPSHR as I uh, mentioned in my last slide also it is the minimum required head at pump suction flange to avoid cavitation. So in any ways in order to avoid cavitation NPSH available should always be greater than NPSHR. This, this is the thing which I told in my earlier slide also that NPSH available should always be greater than NPSH required. That's then only my problem of cavitation can be eradicated or it can be removed from my pumping system. The, uh, my centrifugal pump generally faces this problem if my NPSH available is not calculated properly and my NPSH R is greater than my NPSH available. So while designing a system you should make sure that your NPSH available should be much should be greater than your NPSH required and calculation part of NPSH available we will be uh, doing it in our next video. So what is the effect of cavitation generally why do we want to like uh, remove or eradicate this cavitation from our pumping system if it if it would be good then we, we can stay with it but it's not good for our system so we want uh, what are the effects of cavitation let's see uh, first first of all when when your pump is having this cavitation problem impeller of your pump gets damaged so because what happens is those bubbles which are formed which are formed due to low low uh, suction pressure they are they got burst they got erode uh, they get exploded at the impeller eye and when they are they are exploded again and again at the impeller eye they starts forming a pity on your impeller surface so what happens by time and by time your impeller gets started weak and and it gets and it started getting damaged another problem which if, which happens due to cavitation is vibration of pump is increased as when the same problem again is like when the bubbles uh, they are uh, exploding in on your pump impeller eye so the vibe the pump will get vibrate and when the pump will get vibrate again your you may lose your bearings your vibr your foundation bolts even may come out and the pumping piping system again whole piping system may vibrate and there will be always there will be a churning sound in the pump so your pump won't run smooth whenever you enter your pump house you will be having a churning sound that is coming from your pump so all these problems are the uh, indications that your pump is having cavitation problem so the solution to eradicate this cavitation is only to uh, get uh, to calculate NPSH available correctly and provide it to your pump manufacturer otherwise you will be facing this problem and life of your pump will be uh, getting short uh, very very short so and uh, that's all for today friends in our next video we will be learning how to calculate uh, the NPSH available what is the formula required to calculate NPSH available for more updates please like follow and subscribe our channel that's all for today thanks a lot